Hi everyone, it's Blake here with ChessPathways.com. Uh, today's the first time I'm doing this. I'm going to be playing some Blitz games here and giving some commentary on them. So let's get started. Alright, we've got an opponent pretty close to our rating. Hopefully this game gets going. Looks like they have a few seconds before they'll have to abort this one. From the Philippines. Alright, <laughs> off to a bad start. Looks like we're going to abort this game and try again. Let's play another three minute game. Let's see who we get here. Looking forward to this. As always, uh, feel free to check out chesspathways.com. Uh, we have contests, videos. Uh, make sure to sign up there. It's uh, free to sign up. Never miss an update. Here we go. All right, we got a game here, starting with a Karo Khan. Advanced variation. Let's see what path they decide to go down. Okay, this line's known to not be too threatening. Exchanging off that bishop right away, a lot of times white will try to harass that bishop or just try to get a lead in development like in the short variation. Okay, knight h3. I have not seen this move before. I think we're okay to just start expanding um, and tearing down the base of that pawn chain. They can play c3, but I think we're going to get a pleasant position and we're just going to develop our pieces. Um, in some of these lines, you can even play h5. I've seen this idea. Play h5 and then bring the knight to f5. Um, it's probably unnecessary here. Let's just keep developing. Rook c8. How do I want to go about organizing my king side, though? That's always the question. Because if you play knight e7, you do give them the option to grab this guy. And they're playing this possibly to prepare b4 later, also to take away the b4 square from us. Um, do I exchange yet on d4? That's always a question you have to ask. I think I will. I think I'll exchange on d4 and bring the knight possibly to f5. And I think this position's really fine for both players. Okay, they're pinning our knight. Uh, let's just bring the queen to b6. How are we doing on time? Still doing all right. Time's about even. A little over two minutes each. Okay, that's not a problem for us. We got rid of their dark squared bishop. And we got pressure on this pawn and, and the b2 pawn. Can we go ahead and grab this free pawn? I think white must have misplayed this somehow. If we take on b2, our queen's not getting trapped, right? And it's blitz, so if you see a free pawn, I guess you're supposed to take it. Okay, rook's under attack too. So probably knight c3, and now we have to get our queen out of here. Probably just bring the queen back to c7 though, and we're up a pawn. White can get some compensation, but I think we can just defend everything. Maybe they put the rooks on b1 and c1. That's a little bit annoying. We can just drop back to b8 though, I think. Yeah, just come to b8 and everything's under control. We're going to kick this knight away, get castled and be happy with our extra pawn. Uh, any sacrifice to be worried about? I don't think so. Let's, let's kick this knight away, unless there's a good reason not to. I don't like this knight all up in my face here. <laughs> all right, consolidated that extra pawn. So what next? Maybe you bring the knight to c4, this nice little outpost. Always got to watch out for... Uh, the white's actions over there on the king side, but I don't think they're going to amount to anything. Actually, can we grab another guy? Can we be greedy and <laughs> just take a second pawn? Oh, what, what, what am I talking about? Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> Forget that idea. Let's put the knight on c4 first. Okay. I guess you're coming to, to h5. I'm not really that scared, though. What's your threat? Okay, now this guy really is under attack. What are you threatening? Okay, you want to play like queen g3. Okay, maybe I should have been a little less casual about this. This is kind of annoying. But we do have this nice dark squared bishop that white does not have. Can we go ahead and just play? Well, my concern with g6 is you play knight f6, takes, takes, and now you can like try to come into the dark squares. Huh. Okay, king h8. This is really passive, though. I'm starting to feel like white's getting good... Uh, Good compensation. Okay, you defend that guy. Ah, uh, man. And time... Okay, we're way down on time now. I'm not used to this. <laughs> okay, let's play queen c7 and we can start trying to expand. I don't think any pin here is going to be a big deal because this knight's just so, uh, so solid after b5. Can they undermine us with a4? Probably not. We can always take back. Okay, they're threatening checkmate. Guess we got to play rook g8. <sighs> oh, man. So bishop f8 maybe next. 
Well, uh, we're really locking our pieces in. We're up a pawn here, and we have good activity on the on the queen side. But I don't know how I feel about this whole uh, this activity on the on the king side that White's getting. Okay. Um, okay. Let's play b5. I still can't see any real concrete threat though that White has here. Okay. White wants to swing the rook over and create more threats. Hmm. How do I deal with this? I can always sack a piece here if I have to, and like really open everything. Oh man, time's a, time's a big concern here. Uh, oh god. Oh god. <laughs> Just gotta play. Alright. Alright. Coming back. <laughs> Defend everything. Attack a3 again. I think everything's under control. I can play h6 next even if I want to. Let's play h6. Get the king up here. Okay, now let's take a3 next turn. Uh, keep everything closed. Okay, now, now he's starting to sack stuff in, in desperation. Uh, defend this guy. Is there a threat? Uh-oh. Coming down. Oh, no. <laughs> I think we're gonna, uh, we're gonna lose. Okay. Oh man, I think we started to consolidate everything and then <laughs> the, the, the time problem started to, to creep up on us. Let's go back a little bit here. This is interesting. Is there any better way to maybe deal with this attack? I feel like we're okay up to this point. Yeah, I don't think the attack really was going to amount to anything because we can always bring the queen back. I, I think black's doing well here. Black's up a pawn and this pawn's going to fall. I'm just going forward a bit. Does this sacrifice work? So black's up a whole piece here. What did I play in the game here? Rook d8, just defending this pawn. Huh. Is there anything better? Rook to e8, maybe. If you grab this pawn, I guess we can save the knight. We can take on a3, on a3 even. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like this attack should not work, but <laughs> it's hard to refute in blitz. I'm sure if I go through that. I'll be curious to go through that later and see possibly what I missed. All right, let's try to play a little faster this time. Got someone from Brazil, rated pretty close to us. All right, we're going to get a Roy Lopez. Okay, and I've liked this Queen E2 line. Um, if you've read my blogs, you've seen that I've analyzed a game with this, where White even can cast a long in some lines, which of course is really rare for a Roy Lopez. Okay, but not in this line. I usually cast a long if uh, Black goes for this Bishop C5 idea and uh, allows some of these annoying pins to happen. This is a little more passive from, from black, so I'm going to go ahead and just castle kingside. And the rook goes to d1 in a lot of these lines. Okay. It's always a question here. Do you come straight back to c2, or do you keep the pressure on the diagonal and play here? I'm going to play here just to step out of any knight a5. Okay. And I'm, I'm actually pretty happy when black plays this, because this bishop can be a target. I'm just going to bring my knight around. And we're going to gain a tempo when we come to g3. And black is either going to have to give us the bishop pair, or uh, well, <laughs> probably give us the bishop pair either way. Because if they don't take on f3, you'll see what's going to happen. We're going to play knight h4, knight f5. And uh, yeah. And this works in this line because there's no real discovery possibilities. We always have this in-between move. And we're going to, you know, if knight takes here, knight takes on g6, you take here, we take with check. And white wins a piece. So we're going to get to establish this knight on f5. Yeah, black can fight for the center here, but that's not too big of a concern. And white just kind of builds up on the on the king's side. Queen f3, maybe the bishop can come to g5. And it's always just a little bit annoying for black to deal with. Okay, d4. Yeah, this happens in a lot of these lines when white fails to really take the center. I don't think it's anything to be too concerned about, though. Let's go ahead and play bishop g5, because I don't think black wants to allow these double pawns h4, h5 is another possible idea. Okay. Now we can play d4 again later, though, if we ever really need to. I kind of like white's position here. Doing all right on time. Staying 20 seconds ahead of him. Ooh, okay, all right. This is an interesting idea. Trying to get this pawn out of here to establish this outpost on d4. Can we wreck your pawns yet? I kind of want to. So h4, h5 is not really a threat, because, I mean, we're not going to win anything. You're just going to take our knight. 
I don't really like how you're getting this D4 square. That's kind of annoying. We do always have a knight we can exchange for it. Huh. How do we deal with this? Can we play D4 right now? This is really our last chance to play D4 ourselves. If we play D4... It's a safe move, I think. D4, I'm trying to calculate all the possible ways you can exploit this. I guess one that I'm seeing is D4 you can take. If we take here, can you take? And if we take your queen, you take our queen? No, because we take, we win a piece. Let's, let's go for it. Let's go for it. Oh, I took way too long thinking about that. <laughs> and this pawn has enough defense on it. Okay. I think everything has enough defense. And now we're threatening d5 and e5 in some lines. So this, this looks okay for us. Really got to work on, on speeding up. <laughs> okay. Well, we can play either one we want. We also have, like, knight h6 check with this loose knight. Knight h6 check. I don't know if it leads anywhere. And I don't really want to advance yet, because we're, we're giving a knight a nice outpost no matter which way we advance. Let's just, uh... Man. Okay. <laughs> Let's play e5. Let's open this bishop up. Okay, you're not... Well, you're, you're threatening to come to c3. Okay. I just gotta play. <laughs> Trust my instincts. Let's blitz. Maybe even a3 is an idea in some lines, but probably not. <laughs> we probably just want to focus on the king side over here. What can black play? Okay. Uh, did the sacrifices work yet? E, uh, they might. They might. <laughs> Let's go for it. We have h5 or something, but you can throw this in. Okay, h5. Oh, what am I thinking? I thought I had a queen here already. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I'm not the best at blitz. You, my blitz rating is a lot lower than my my real life rating. Okay. Uh, check. This doesn't lead anywhere though. We don't have any discoveries with check to get this queen. Um, you're covering everything. Okay. Play ninety four coming to f six. Oh, we're just we're just hanging stuff now. That didn't work. Queen takes f five and the game's over. I think. Or that. Anything. There's nothing, right? Just a blunder. Yeah. Alright, that's unfortunate. Thought we got a pretty nice position there out of the opening, but unfortunately it wasn't able to work. I really like that d4 idea I came up with, though, because I, th I think d4 works. Uh, where was it? D4. Yeah, right there. Because that's really our last chance to play it. Black has this idea to kind of undermine our c3 pawn to secure the d4 outpost for themselves. And we're playing d4 here. And I think this is really pretty nice for white. We get this huge center. It's just hard to make use of. I feel like all our pieces are good here. I'm wondering where things really went wrong. Okay, so this, this sacrifice is just ridiculous. I was just under pressure on time and <laughs> did something stupid. I think we just have to take it a little more slow. Probably play bishop d2 and, and uh, just play from there. I think white's doing all right. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's the answer. All right, let's try one more. One more. <laughs> let's finish this with a win. All right. Got the black pieces. Let's go. London system. All right. I like the system with c5 and uh, usually queen b6 here if you play e3. Yeah. So queen b3 is one of the main moves, and we can play c4 here. If you take, we get these double pawns, but our rook file's open, and we can quickly play b5, b4. Yeah. And you can't actually stop b4 here because of the, the pin. Yeah, so here we have to be careful. If we don't play b4, they'll move the rook away. We're never going to get to play b4, but here we get one more chance we can play b4 because of the pin. So the double pawns aren't a problem. Black gets rid of them, and black's going to get good play on the queen side. Usually white tries to play like knight e5 and eventually break with e4. It's a fairly balanced position, but I don't think white is getting a huge advantage here out of the opening. Okay, a4. I've never seen that move before here, actually. I'm wondering if we can play b3 and really isolate this pawn and go after it later as a weakness, with like bishop d7 and, and that kind of stuff. Let, let's do that, actually. Let's just completely isolate this pawn and see if we can just win it later. Just develop, play really solidly. I don't know how white's going to defend that pawn. 
Yeah, so often I would bring the bishop out of the pawn chain, but here I'm thinking I might want it on d7. But no rush here. We need to get castled first. I know white's going to try to break with e4. Huh. All right. You can play e4. And if we take, you're going to take on c4. That's kind of annoying. Yeah, maybe I underestimated this idea. We're just kind of slow getting to this guy, and you're going to undermine our pawn chain. A lot of times in super close positions, you can get away with that. But maybe this one just doesn't work. White is getting some counterplay here. If we don't take, I'm worried about some of these, these pins with the bishop. Uh, can we swing the bishop away? What if we just start doubling on the a file? Are you threatening anything here? If you take, we just take. Okay. <laughs> Once again, taking way too long. Not used to this. Oh no, are we allowing this in some line? I don't think that's so good for you now, though, because we're going to get two minor pieces for the rook. Yeah. I mean, if you want that, we can do it, but I, th I think black's going to be okay there. Okay, we're going to go for that. Yeah, two minor pieces for the rook is usually usually pretty good. Especially with no open files here. Alright. This pawn is weak, and we can't really defend it too easily. I guess knight a5 works, though. No, it doesn't. You have bishop c7. Then we have knight c4. And if you take, we take. You might go for that, though, and open the files. Whenever you have a material imbalance here, like white has the rook, we have the two minor pieces, you always want to think about what changes in the structure are going to benefit you know, the material that you have. And here, having the extra rook, I think opening these files is going to favor white. He's got an extra pawn, too, which is pretty typical in these situations with the rook for the two minor pieces. Okay, we're going to come to e4. And I think this pawn is going to have trouble being defended. Our knights are pretty annoying, actually, for white. We can hop all over the place. Rook c8. Let's keep piling up on those weaknesses. Or do we just play knight c4 right now? Gotta play faster. <laughs> Let's go for it. Bishop b4, I'm guessing. Challenge this bishop and try to get us to take and remove that weakness. Although then we're kind of infiltrating. Okay. I think this might be good. Yeah, I gotta be careful though. Making use of this pin. Yeah, I think we're gonna pick up this pawn and get a pretty nice position. Oh. Okay, I did not consider that. Can we just take though? I hope so. Yeah, what does white do here? I'm worried about some of these pins, but our pieces seem to have all the all the key squares covered. Okay. Uh, is there any tactic here? I feel like I should be able to win something with how, with how active these pieces are. But I can't see anything clear. Knight d3, where do you go? Yeah, there. Gotta play faster. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have allowed that. This is kind of annoying. Ah, and you're gonna take. You can take on a4, though. This is definitely good for us, but it's just it's gonna be a time scramble. Oh the back rank, the back rank. Oh no. Okay. Go off that back rank. All right, I like the two pieces here. We're gonna be able to organize much better. This pawn is hopefully falling. It's just pre-moves now. Got him. <laughs> All right, so it went on time. Let's go back there. That was interesting out of the opening. So C4, 
One key point also is that if white plays queen c2 here, we actually can play bishop f5, even though that doesn't look safe, because if they take our bishop, we're going to be able to take on b2 when the rook's hanging. And there's some concerns that your queen gets trapped, but it doesn't, um, at least in, in the key line. So usually white will either play queen c2 and then queen back to c1, or they do what happened in the game and just exchange there. And black gets these doubled pawns, but you can march them up. So a3, and we march up that pawn. And I've never seen this a4 move before, and maybe our idea here is not so great to just really lock down the position and treat this pawn as a weakness, because white is going to be able to break in the center. Then again, if we can keep the center stable and just not take here and, you know, never have to worry about these pins because it's defended, if we can make this work, this pawn does look like a long-term weakness. Now, maybe I should have doubled by coming to a5, where I can oversee this pawn and get out of the, the, the line of sight of this bishop. But rook a6 gives white the possibility to go for this and give up the, the two minor pieces for the rook. I'm not sure how great that is, though, because a lot of times in the middle game, the two minor pieces are just better than a rook, especially with no open files. And that was kind of the narrative of the rest of the game. So we get, we get you know, through here. I'm sure I missed some tactics in here. My pieces were really active. Um, but somehow I wasn't able to find, like, a decisive blow. And we get to this end game. But even in the end game, especially with all the pawns on one side of the board, I feel like the two minor pieces here are going to be a lot better than, than the rook in general. Um, although there is some concern. Are you, are you just very quickly able to pick up our pawn? I guess not in this specific position, because we just take on d4 and defend. Um, but you always have to check concretely, of course. All right, <laughs> this was my first time doing anything like this, a blitz session online. Hopefully you all liked it. Um, give me feedback. Let me know what you'd like to see for future videos and future, uh, future sessions like this where I give commentary on my games. Thanks. Bye.